Welcome to Cascade High School for tonight's doubleheader between the Cloverdale Clovers and the Cascade Cadets. The Clovers come in at 11 and 7 on the year. The Cadets actually rank 10th in 2A, come in at 12 and 4. Hi, I'm Jake Morris. Alongside me, Mike Walensky. Mike, thanks for joining me this evening. Good to be here, Jake. And I look forward to watching these two ball clubs play. The Cadets are on a fast track. There's no question about it. 12 and 4. Dave Carpenter in his second year has done a great job with this ball club. Matthew Langdon's team, 11-7. They'd like to get a victory here. This is a conference matchup. Yeah, we, are, of course, are in the Endeavor pregame report. Let's take a look at tonight's X Factor, if we could, Mike. Tonight's X Factor is Bailey Walker. Bailey Walker is the X Factor tonight, and it, it will be critical for Bailey Walker to have a good ball game. The 5'10 senior for the Cascade Cadets. And Walker is averaging 14.1 points per game, and uh, she leads the team in rebounding at 8.5. It'll be critical for Cascade to take a leadership role in this ball game. They're a little bit more seasoned ball club than Cloverdale with some freshmen playing in the lineup. Absolutely right. Bailey, they look to Bailey Walker to lead the way. Keys to victory for tonight's game. What do we have here? Well, it's going to be critical for both these ball clubs to, first of all, for Cloverdale, they've got to eliminate the perimeter game. A cascade, an outstanding three-point shooting team. Michaela Collier coming to tonight's game with 36 threes. Cascade's got to get to the foul line. Cloverdale doesn't have as much depth, and they've got to protect the glass. Both teams, the teams that are going to rebound the best tonight, I think is going to have a chance to win the ball game. That's absolutely what's going to need to happen. I think we're about to start the national anthem, so we will quickly step aside. We'll be back with starting lineups and tip-off right after this. Want to know what I like best about playing basketball for my high school? I like it because it's a place where my friends get to see me play. I like it because I'm playing for someone besides myself. I'm playing for everybody in my school and every person in my community. Indiana High School Sports. They're more than just a game. Come and see me play. It hits the rim right as the light goes in. And Hogan gets across the middle. Roll. Right at the end zone. Oh, oh, down. Oh, 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 oh. Wow. And our looking to throw this time. In going deep down the field. Down. He's got music. Look at this one again. Time will expire and the Gophers will win. It's on the board. The North wins 10 to 7. Experience the exciting world of television entertainment with Endeavor ETV. Get more than 350 quality TV channels, including HD, movies, sports, family programming, lifestyle, and local news and weather. Never miss a program with Endeavor Whole Home DVR. Stop a program in one room and continue watching TV in another. Enjoy video on demand and pay-per-view selections with over 2,000 titles. Call 1-800-922-6677 or visit our website at weendeavor.com for more details. Endeavor Communications continues to be the leader of technology in our communities. We provide crystal clear voice, super fast internet, exciting television entertainment, security for home and business, medical alert systems, IT services for home or business, and our new 4G LTE wireless telephone service with nationwide coverage. Call 1-800-922-6677 or go to our website at weendeavor.com for more details. We welcome you back to Cascade High School for tonight's doubleheader between the Cascade Cadets and the visiting Cloverdale Clovers. As I mentioned before the break, the Cadets 12 and 4, ranked 10th in 2A. The Clovers come in at 11 and 7. Let's get into tonight's starting lineups. First for the Cloverdale Clovers, we have Haley Thomas, Shrum, Walker, Combs, and Helterbrand. We'll round things out for the Clovers. For the Cadets. We have Collier, Bryant, Amelia Bryant, Bailey Walker, our X Factor, and Trinity Hostetler, excuse me, Livia and Amelia Bryant. I believe there's a third Bryant on this roster as well tonight, so we'll try to keep track of those for you. But, Mike, you and I were talking before the game. Some schools, like, can claim they built their school around basketball. This one literally did <laughs> build the school around basketball. We have classrooms and lockers behind us, exactly, uh, actually. So it's a little unique gym. This is a fantastic stadium. A bowl built into the facility here. Probably seats 2,500. And, and I know that as this game progresses, uh, the first game of the tonight uh, between these girls basketball team, this place is going to fill up. 
I think the Cascade following is really confident about their program's ability to move this thing forward at 12 and 4, coming off a good win on January 10th, 64-56 over Northview. The good thing is for Cloverdale, they're also coming off a victory uh, of trouncing of West Vigo, 66-35. So both ball clubs have to feel pretty good, and they know each other. I mean, they're both conference rivals. Yeah, absolutely. The girls' programs here at Cascade have had uh, success in recent years. Basketball team's been very good. The softball team last year captured a regional title. So Cadets and Clover's getting ready to tip off here. Game one of our doubleheader. The tip is won by the Clovers after they wrestle away the ball. Number 32, Haley Thomas with it now. Kicks it out in the corner to Hel Helterbrand. Back to Thomas. Thomas for three. No good on that one. Rebound by Shrum. Back out to Helterbrand. You know, Sammy Shrum, just a freshman, do a good job of getting to the basketball. If they can get 50-50 balls tonight, they'll have a chance to compete. But they've got to hold on to the ball and take care of it. There's a turnover. And Thomas loses control of that one. Back in the hand of the cadets now. Collier struggling to get rid of it. Pass is deflected, goes out of bounds, will remain cadets ball. Good effort by Tori Combs in the post, number 31. She leads this ball club in blocks with an average of 2.4 per game. Combs stretches out. She's very tall at about 6'1". Ryan inbounds the ball, gets it to Collier. Collier for three, no good. Rebound Clovers. Yeah, Clover's doing a good job blocking out down on the post, and now they're going to look down to break down this, this uh, zone. Now it's in a man-to-man -man, uh, defense uh, for the Cascade Cadets. Shrum with the ball now, top of the key. She's going to drive. Crosses over, finds Helterbrand in the corner. They reset their offense. Thomas going to drive in, kicks it out. Dangerous pass, and Cadets try to come away with it, and they do. They're on the fast break now, and they get the bucket to fall. Nice use of body, nice use of glass on the little finger roll, and the bucket for Cascade. Good effort. Michaela Collard there with the layup. Collier averaging 14 and a half points a game, and there's an unforced turnover. Good, solid pressure early on in this ball game by Cascade in the backcourt. Yeah, unforced turnover there by Tori Combs for the Clovers. Top of the key now for the Cadets. They find a post player down low, misses the layup, rebound by Combs. Walker didn't get her seat fat. She quickly forced a shot up, and a good job by Cloverdale on the board. Dangerous pass by Thomas is picked off by the Cadets. Collier drives in again and is blocked by Combs. What a defensive play there by Combs, Mike. Yeah, no doubt about it. And, and, the, and, and the plus side of this, Jake, is she got back on defense, and she's a post player. She's a bigger kid inside. She got back, got good position, got that right hand on the basketball for the block. Dangerous pass from the Cadets. It'll be stolen by number 11, Shrum, from the for the Clovers as Thomas brings the ball up the court. Finds Walker, back to Thomas. Thomas is going to drive, kicks it out to Walker. Walker for three. That ball got tipped. Rebound to Walker, and she finds a wide open player in the open court. Two more points for the Cadets. Both teams, Jake, are trying to push tempo here, and that time the Cadets took advantage of numbers there, three on one for the easy bucket. That was Bryant on that last layup. Combs now drives in. Can't get that layup to fall. Rebound Combs, put back Combs. Four to two now. Just solid effort by Tori Combs going to the bucket. The leading scorer for the Clovers at 15.3 points of all game. Another turnover stolen by Thomas. Thomas for two, no good. But she is fouled and that is by number 33, Kaylee Walker. A lot of turnovers and sloppy passing in this one early on, Mike. And, and a lot of it is due to both teams providing Intense ball pressure, which is a good sign for both ball coaches. And now we've got uh, Cloverdale at the foul line, and they've been uh, struggling from the foul line this year, shooting just about 57% as a team.
Haley Thomas, just a 59% free throw shooter on the season. Gets the second one to fall, though. Haley Thomas, another freshman. She's averaging just 6.6 .6 points a game, but they're getting a lot of good minutes from freshmen. But there's a turnover. Another turnover. Thomas for two. Nice shot there. And the Clovers take the lead, 5-4. to four. Clover's going to start pressuring the ball a little. Now come out in a full court press. Cadets able to handle it. Back out top, nearly stolen by Combs. Driving in, blocked, and rebounded by Shrum. Shrum finds Combs on the block. Combs for another bucket. Good solid play by Combs. Posting the right foot down on the block and kissing it off the glass. Jets trying to break the press, nearly turn it over again. Haley Walker struggling to hang on to the ball. Collier able to save it before it goes out of bounds. Cloverdale with a lot of looks defensively. Ran a 3-2 zone, now there looks like a man-to-man -man here. Gonna get a foul off ball. Judging by the reaction, that may be on 31. Yeah, Combs. Corey Combs. Yeah, Combs reached over the top as Amelia Bryant, number 24, was cutting at the elbow. She got over the top, got contact, gets a foul, and, uh, and now the cadets go to the bench for the first time, Jake, and, and, and they, need, they need some rest. Yeah, this has been a pretty fast-paced game to start off. Collier with the ball now, top of the key. Gets it out to Bats. Yeah. That's number 14, Renoske for two. Good job of reading the defense and getting to the rack there. Cloverdale in the matchup 3-2 zone. Shrum for the basket, no good. And we're going to get a timeout from the Cadets. This is just a 30-second timeout. We will stay right here with you. So far, a score 7-6 to six in favor of the Clovers. And I think uh, for Cascade and Cadets, Dave Carpenter wants to get his team settled down and figure out this defense. They're coming out at 3-2 zone, but they're matching up, and it's creating some confusion, and they're pressuring the ball. When they pressure the ball, they've also turned it over as well. Yeah. Per ball pressure has been extremely uh, an extreme factor in this game early on. Multiple turnovers for both teams, and you're seeing a lot of fast breaks uh, buckets in the process, but Torrey Combs has impressed me so far. Yes. So for, for a big player, being able to go from one side of the court to the other, very impressive. No question about it. She's also uh, uh, very strong offensively on the post. She's taken her time and gotten a few kisses off the glass and got some points and finished. And finishing is very important in this ball game. You got to put points on the board. Cadets working on the press right now. Big pass up, up the court. Going to draw the foul there. That's number 22, Abby Walker, on the foul. And I'll tell you what, these Cascade Cadet uniforms, extremely <laughs> difficult to see, but that is number zero, Collier, at the line. <laughs> and, and Collier nearly put herself in jeopardy there. She took an extra dribble before she went to the bucket. It could have uh, put herself in a position to get a shot block. Fortunately, she moved her body forward and got contact before she put up the shot and gets two here. Able to knock both of those down and give the Cadets the lead. Trump gets it back to Thomas. Cadets starting the press now. Very similar teams. Combs wide open. Easy two, no good. It looked like it was tipped by Cascade. They're going to say to Combs touched it last. It'll remain with the Cadets. Yeah, good effort, though, by Cloverdale. Pressuring. The front court action and going to the basket and trying to score. If, if there's anything you're going to do to break down a defense that's pressuring you full court, it's to attack the bucket 
and make them pay. And once you do that, then you can call out the dogs. Well, Combs for being the center power forward on this team is actually up in the press and not the safety valve in the back. Cadets with the ball now crossing half court. Collier with it, top of the key. Going to split the defense. Nearly turns it over. Cadets for three. No good. Rebound, put back. I believe that is number 24, Amelia Bryant. Yeah, Amelia Bryant did a good job posting up, getting good space on the follow up, but a quick shot. I'm not sure if Coach Carpenter liked the shot, but they got the <laughs> rebound in the bucket. Lake and Price, number 34, the freshman there, Jake. She's averaging 3.9 points. She had the ball deep in the post. She needs to go up and draw the foul. She tried to pass the ball. Luckily, it was deflected out of bounds. Inbounds pass gets it to Combs, but she can't get the bucket to fall. Ends up with the rebound, though. Back in the hands of Thomas. Top of the key for Thomas as she drives in. Gets it up to Combs. Combs trying to do something with it. Nearly turns it over. Great pass there, finding 34, Price. On the block, Price will be fouled. That's Rasnake, number 14. And Hannah is a junior guard of 5'11". And as you said before, Price did a nice job of reading the defense, falling down low in the post, getting the pass, and gets the foul. A great vision by Combs, finding Price on the block. She can't get the first one to go. 63% free throw shooter on the season. Number 13, Olivia Bryant will check in. Olivia Bryant, a junior, averaging 9.2 points a ball game. And, and Jake, she's averaging 3.9 assists. So maybe she gets a chance to alleviate some of this backcourt pressure. It's the second one to fall. Two-point lead now for Cascade. Holmes is really pressuring here on this fast break. She's knocked multiple balls out of bounds. That's inbound the ball. Big pressure here by Cloverdale. They're going to get the 10-second call. Yeah, Raznake was being pressured by the freshman Sammy Shrum there, and she was not aware of the 10-second count, and that's a turnover. Very rare you see that. I, that's actually the first time I've seen that this year in all the games we've covered. Now, the unique thing is that when they go up the next level of collegiate basketball, yep. Along the women's line, there is no 10-second rule. Thomas for two, no good. Price gets tied up with number 20, Gibbs. It's going to be a jump ball and stay with the cadets. Carly Gibbs, another freshman. Cascade getting a good look oh, at the great zone here. Fast break there. That's number 12, Gross with the easy layup there. Executed to perfection on the fast break. She got the bucket, but I can tell you, Jake, she traveled. And uh, <laughs> she got away with extra step there. They gave it to her, no doubt in my mind. Sammy Strum just had the ball and was fouled by Alexis Gross. This has to be a concern now for Cloverdale because I think Cascade has figured out a brow to break this pressure and get to the rim. Yeah, that last break looked extremely easy for the cadets. Thomas going to pull up right there, and she's going to drain it. Big shot for Thomas, the freshman. Averaging 6.6 .6 points a ball game. Got to play some defense, though. Bryant drives in. Can't get that one to go. Back in the hands of the Clovers now. You know, Sammy Shrum did a good job getting her hands vertically. Thomas again out. for three. Can't get that one to go. It's rebounded by Combs, though. Kicks it out. The freshman Shrum back to Combs. Combs thought about it. Skip pass to Shrum. Can't hold on to it. We're going to get another foul on Alexis Gross. That is two quick fouls for her, Mike. And I gave her credit for being aggressive there. Reached in maybe a little bit too closely. The referee calling a holding foul. She draws a foul. She'll check out of the game, but she got some nice minutes for the cadets here in the first half. Shrum in inbounds the ball to Thomas. Gets it up to number three, McCracken. Down to Price. 
Price for two, no good, partially blocked. Cadets end up with it in the hands of Bryant. Leia won't fall, rebound by Collier. She loses control of it. Back to the Clovers. Again, they had the numbers. The Cadets had the numbers. They just couldn't finish. Thomas is going to be key in this ball game over 32 if she can knock down that perimeter shot. Cracking with the ball now on the wing. Going to drive in, take the jumper, blocked. They're going to get Price on the, on the foul. 